This is a simple game made in five minutes, each with different visual scripting tools for Unity, Playmaker and Bolt. Everyone asks me, if I can't code, which tool should I use? Well, I decided the best way to show you is to make the same game in five minutes using both tool sets. After that, I'll go into my pros and cons for each and pick a winner. First off, this video was inspired by Pushy Pixel's channel, so be sure to check them out and see how they made the same game with C Sharp. So let's dive right into Playmaker and start the timer now. First, let's go to Game Object. Let's go to 3D Object and then Sphere. This will be our player. Let's call him Player to stay organized. Let's zero out his X, Y, and Z position coordinates. Let's go to the bottom and let's go to Add Component. We need a Playmaker FSM, so click Playmaker, click Playmaker FSM, and then click Edit. This is where all of our interactive features go. So let's go to Action Browser. Let's find Input, and let's find Get Axes. Double click that, and then let's type in Horizontal. In the multiplier, change the 1 to 10, and then click on the Store dropdown, and then click New Variable, and let's name it something like H Movement. Okay, next we need to move our player, so let's go to Action Browser again. Let's go to Transform, and then let's go to Translate. Double click that. And then we will put the X drop down as H movement. Now what happens if our player is hurt? Well, we need a transition. So let's right click on state one, go to add transition, go to system events, then go to collision enter. Now while holding control, drag and drop, then let go. And then that should create a new state automatically. So let's go to action browser. And now let's find game object and then destroy self. That's how we die in this game that we just made. So that should be it for, for here. Actually, there's one more thing. Make sure that we click the movement tool, and then we need to move this down to about negative three on the Y axis. So keep bringing it down. There we go, about negative three. I think that looks pretty good. Let's go to game object. We're gonna create an enemy. Go to 3D object, cube. A really mean looking cube. Let's type in enemy, and then let's zero it out just to stay organized. And then we need to add two components. First, we need to go to physics and then add rigid body. That means that the forces of gravity can affect it. And let's go to add component. And let's add a playmaker FSM again. Now let's click on edit, action browser. Let's go to transform and then this time rotate, double click. Now let's turn off these little variable boxes so we can manually input the numbers. Let's do 300, 300, 300 and then make sure per second is checked. Next up, we need to do a wait function. So let's go to time and double click wait. And then let's say five seconds, it destroys itself. So we need a transition before we can do a finish event. So right click on state one, add transition, finished. Then add finished right here. And then while holding control, drag and drop, then let up. And then that will automatically create a new state. So now let's go to game object, destroy self, and we should be good there. Oh, and this is really important. We need to drag the enemy game object into the assets window right here, and that creates a prefab. Now we can delete this, and now we need to create a way to spawn our enemies. So let's click on main camera. Let's go to add component, playmaker, FSM like usual. So we need to create a random number. So let's go to Action Browser, let's go to Math, and then let's go to Random Float, double click that. And then in Minimum, let's do negative nine, and Max, let's do nine. We then store the result as Random X. Next, we need to set a Vector3, which is basically just three numbers in one. So let's go to Vector3, click on Set Vector3 XYZ, and then we're gonna save this as Random Spawn in the variable. And then in the, in the X dropdown, let's set this to random X. Then in Y, this is important, we need to put it as nine so that it's up above our player. Next, we need to create an object. So let's go to game object, go to create object. And then we need to drag and drop our enemy prefab right here. We need to drag it into the game object box. Next, our, for our position, just hit the dropdown. There's random spawn. We need to add one more thing. We need to add a wait function under time. So double click that. And then let's put it as 0.1. This is pretty much our difficulty. And then we need to add a finish event. So right click, add transition, finished. 
then make sure finish event is right here. And then this is important. We need to drag finished and we need to drag it to itself. So it creates a loop. And there we have it. We should have a game. Let's play. Oh, here they come. Here they come. Watch out. Watch out. Don't touch them. Don't touch them. Oh, I died. Let's try it again. Hit play. Hit play again at the top. All right. We got a game made with Playmaker. Now keep the whole dev process in your head because I'm going to be doing the same thing with Bolt. Here's a new project. I downloaded Bolt for free from the asset store and set it to human friendly naming and we're ready to go. Let's start the timer now. All right, let's create our player. Let's go to game object, 3D object sphere. We'll name him player. And then let's go down, add component and let's type in flow for flow machine. Now we need to create the macro. So hit new, let's just call it player. And then let's hit edit graph. And I like docking it on the bottom. All right, an update event. Let's drag this arrow and let's type in get axes. There we go, we'll do the top one and we're gonna call this axes name horizontal. Now we need to multiply this, so let's drag this and then hit multiply, multiply scalar. And then also let's right click right here and then type in delta time. And then we'll connect that to here. And then we got to multiply again. So multiply that by scalar and let's multiply it by 10. And then we need to move. So let's type in translate. There we go. Let's do translate X, Y, Z. And then that looks right. And remember, we got to connect our get axis to our translate. Next, let's use the middle mouse button to move. And let's right click here and let's type in on collision. Let's do on collision enter right here and then we're gonna move this over to here and type in destroy and then we're gonna look for game object destroy not component and next we need to right click here and type in self and then connect that alright that's looking good oh let's move our player down to about negative three and next we need to make an enemy so let's go to game object 3d object cube and we need to add a rigid body component so go over to here type in rigid body that looks good. And then go to add component. Let's add another flow machine with bolt. And we'll create a new macro, call it enemy. That's looking good. Oh, let's name him before I forget. And then let's edit graph. Okay, we got a new flow graph here for our enemy. So let's drag this arrow over here and let's type in wait four seconds. And then let's do the delay as five and then do another arrow. And then let's do destroy do game object and then remember we got to do self so you can select it there and then connect it all right after five seconds it will destroy itself but wait we need to make this a coroutine or else it will not work so let's go to graph inspector and make sure coroutine is enabled that looks good i'll dock it right there and let's make these cubes spin make them a little more threatening so let's type in rotate in the update function and select the oilers one Oh, we gotta get delta time to rotate. So let's type in delta time, get delta time, and let's multiply that, scalar, and then let's, let's set B as 300, and then multiply that by a new vector three. So I'm just gonna type in vector three, and then create vector three X, Y, Z. And let's connect the other three parameters, X, Y, Z, and then let's connect that to Euler's, and that should be good. Oh, of course, we can't forget to make this a prefab. So let's, um, okay, it's zeroed out. So just drag this into the project, and there, that's a prefab enemy. All right, now we need a way to spawn our enemies. So let's do that on the main camera. Why not? Let's hit add component and then type in state machine. We're not using a flow graph. We're gonna do a state machine for this. And let's hit new and let's just call it spawn. Let's call it spawner right there. And let's hit edit graph. All right, so right click on start and then say make self transition. Now double click the arrow. Now right click over here and say enter enter state and then we're going to drag this and then go wait for wait for seconds this will be the difficulty of our game let's set it to 0 0.1 and let's connect that to trigger transition oh can't forget we're using wait for seconds so we need to set this as coroutine right here and that should be good let's go back to main camera by clicking main camera and let's double click start state and now on enter state let's drag the arrow and then type in random 
we want random range. And if you can't see the numbers, zoom in with your mouse wheel. And let's do negative nine for minimum and then nine for maximum. Now let's take this over here and type in vector three. And then right here, vector three in Unity. And let's do create vector three, X, Y, Z. Now connect our random number to X and then go to Y and then nine. That will put the cubes up above our player. And then that looks good. Let's take the arrow and let's go to instantiate or create a game object. And let's do original position parent. Let's move over here. And then rotation, we gotta drag this and then just select quaternion literal. Then remember our new vector three, we need to connect that to position. And then we need to select our prefab. So click this. You could just drag and drop if you want to, but I'll select it from here, enemy. And let's delete our old enemy so it doesn't kill our player. And then we should be ready to go. Let's play. Oh, here they come, here they come. Oh, it feels the same as our playmaker one. I think we did a pretty good job. Oh, and I'm dead. Let's do that again. All right, all right. Oh, died. Cool, it plays just like the playmaker one. I think this is looking pretty good. And if you want, you can see the stuff working, like the spawner, let's cl click on main camera. And here it is. It's waiting 0.1 seconds. It's doing that, and then we click on start. Oh, here's our random numbers. You can see it right there, generating it from negative nine to nine. That's the position of where our enemy spawns. So yeah, it's looking pretty cool. Hopefully this helped illustrate the differences between these two awesome tools, because as you can tell, they're pretty different. But what if I had to pick only one? Honestly, my preference is formed by so many different things, including my background as a designer and a filmmaker. Some people are just naturally talented with programming, but that definitely isn't me. So my likes and dislikes are different from a lot of other developers, but I'll try to explain the pros and cons for each. First off, a pro for Playmaker is that it removes the learning curve surrounding code. You don't have to worry about what a coroutine is or why delta time is important. You just search for the action and it works. This was huge for me when I started because all these experienced programmers on the forums assumed I knew this stuff already. We all start somewhere though, and I like how Playmaker simplifies things. Because my games are also pretty simple and similar to movies, it works pretty well. And that brings me to a con, simplicity equals limitations. If you're making a very complicated game with combat systems and procedural gameplay, Playmaker is probably not gonna cut it. Complex games need complex systems to work and make sense, especially if you're working with a team. Another con is the price, which is set at $65, as opposed to Bolt, which is free. Also, the interface can get confusing and doesn't feel as polished as Bolt's. Just remember that with both programs, it's really easy for all that code to turn into a bowl of spaghetti. Now, the big pro with Bolt is that it's just like C-sharp, but that's also the big con. It's just like C-sharp. There is so much stuff you're expected to know that I'm sure Bolt will still scare away a few newcomers, but it's easier than diving straight into coding. The UI is amazing and searching for units just feels right, but at the end of the day, you're still writing C-sharp code. You're just using a mouse more than a keyboard. I can see why Unity acquired this asset because it fits into their educational goals so well. Unity wants you to learn code because coding and game development will forever be tied together. However, I'm proof that you can finish a game with Playmaker, and now that I've gained some confidence by using beginner tools, things like structs, arrays, and singletons don't scare me anymore. So which one should you use? If I absolutely had to pick one for a beginner, it would be Playmaker. It's just easier to start with. However, if your goal is to learn C Sharp and become a rock star coder one day, then I would still start off with Playmaker, but then I would graduate to Bolt, then finally to C Sharp. Game dev newcomers give up every day because there really is an overwhelming amount to learn. But I'm convinced if they can quickly make a simple game that they can actually play, they won't give up as easily. You'll have to learn a few more interfaces, but you will see progress faster and your motivation will skyrocket. If you like this video, then you'll love my online school, Game Dev Unlocked. Every facet of game development is covered, including brainstorming, marketing, and launching your game. I show you how to take the simple game here and add tons of cool features in only one day. There's also the intermediate section where we make a first person thriller in one week, all using free assets, and I show you how to publish it and start making money. Check out the description below for a coupon code. I hope this video helped. Remember, a tool is only that, a tool. Countless successful games have used Bolt, Playmaker, Unreal, Unity. It really doesn't matter in the long run. What happens here isn't half as important as what happens here. So challenge yourself to finish a game no matter the toolset you use, because trust me, it's worth it.